How are you doing? Mr. Coleman here, Whitmore High School. Just want to talk to you about PPE and casting. So this is our cast. It's now ready to cast. We got it ready in the last video. Um, I want to talk to you about how to use uh, a hacksaw. So the uh, pewter does not always come in this shape. It is um, in a bar shape and you have to cut it to size. So uh, when you ask to cut it, you could use a coping saw, but I would prefer you which watch you should use for metalwork cutting, it is a hacksaw. Make sure you use pistol grip with your cutting hand, with your main cutting hand, and put your opposite hand on the frame. It's built to be used like that, so over and back. You don't have to go up and down. You, you can use it sideways in the vise. This is your hacksaw. A word on PPE before I turn on the extraction system. Uh, my PPE, my personal protective equipment, is leather. It is very good insulator to heat, meaning that I will not get burnt. Also, I'm going to wear a full facial shield just in case that the molten pewter may spill out on top of me that I do not get injured. Now, I'm going to now get some recycled pewter and I'm going to melt it in the ladle. This is the ladle, a similar thing as what you use in the kitchen. It's got a spout, just if you just see it there, it's got a spout. I'm going to melt that using the torch on the brazen hack over here. I'm going to now turn it on for myself. I'm going to try and do most of my talking when the extractor is off. I need to switch it on now. Very quickly while I have it here, the inner cone of the torch is the hottest, that's where I'm holding the lid too, so it's going to heat quicker for me. Notice that when I started off uh, melting the pewter before I didn't have my gloves on, but I realised that I didn't have them on and I put them on for my own safety. 
Next part, just going to get the camera so that you can see what I'm doing down here. Just going to bring the pewter in. Again. Now, if you look closely, you see that the pewter is melted. Now, the pewter itself has got dross or dirt on the top, and you don't want that in your mould. So what you do is you get the trowel, and you move it from back to front, and you clean it. You should be able to see yourself in the reflection of the mould and pewter. That's when you know it's clean. Make sure you clean it out over at the brazing hearth. And now we're ready to cast. As you see, that's much cleaner. Okay. I'm going to place the cast in the vise. One more time, just going to clean out the pewter. Make sure it's nice and clean. And I'm going to bring the spout of the ladle, as you see, the spout part. And I'm going to put it over the countersink and the sprues. And I'm going to very slowly fill it. Because when I can see it levelling, that's when I need to stop. Here it goes. And I stop now. I don't want to fill it any more than that. Because if I do, it'll come out and it'll go all over the room. Place the ladle back at the brazing heart. I try and keep my fingers away from this general area. Possibly a good idea, mark it out, make sure that you leave something over so somebody doesn't accidentally put their hand in it. Next thing I'm going to show you is how to take it apart once it's cooled. It should take about 10-15 minutes for it to cool. All you do to take it out is you push it out like that or you may have to break the mold like this one. Actually snap the mold and then you will be able to finish it, file it and cut the sprue off on the top using a hacksaw.